One of the most common problems faced by painters is material identification. For instance, what are these balls? Without scale reference or context, all the viewer has to go on is the way that the materials reflect light. So in this video, I'm going to explain the importance of glossiness, where to look for it, and I'll suggest an exercise that'll help you hone your eye. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. So if you guess that these are both photos of ping pong balls, you'd be halfway right. I actually cheated a bit and hid one important component of the image on the left, so I'll now reveal it. There I edited out the glossy highlight, and in doing so, made it look very similar to the actual ping pong ball on the right. So this glossy, or specular, highlight can help you identify the proper surface. Let's take a look at some construction materials. You could describe concrete, tile, and granite as all sort of rocky in texture. But when you see them here at a steep angle, their glossy highlights tell a different story. When I hide the color information and make it a grayscale image, it'll become even more evident. See how much sharper the glossy highlight is on those polished materials? Whereas the ceramic tile has a much softer transition from the highlight to the midtone. Also, notice how the polished concrete has sort of a medium scale rippling across the surface? Well, you can actually only see this detail where the glossy highlight describes it. So in that way, a glossy highlight is incredibly important to showing off the form. Because if all you could see of this polished concrete was the bottom third of the image, it would look rather flat. So let's take a quick look at the forces that are causing this variation. So the diagram I've drawn here is not drawn to scale. Where you see the light coming out of a light source, bouncing off the surface and into the viewer's eye, the surface is actually zoomed in a thousand percent, like you're looking through a microscope. So what you see here with the polished material is that it's generally flat. It's got a little bit of surface variation, and so some of the light beams will scatter a little bit, but most of them will be cleanly reflected into your eye. So what you're seeing in the halo effect around the glossy highlight is this scattering. Now let's take a look at the tile and see how different that is. So again, when seen at a micro level, this material has a much rougher surface. So you can see the same light source is hitting, but then scattering much more. Because at a micro level, there are thousands of small planes, each reflecting the light at a slightly different direction. So the result is the smoother fall off the highlight, creating the soft, diffused specularity. So when it comes to painting, the characteristics of your glossy highlights can make a profound difference. So here I copied a simple gray ball five times, and then painted a different glossy highlight on each. So everything else about them is identical. But despite this, each indicates a different material, and your brain goes a long way to fill in the rest of the information. So when it comes to realistic surfaces, there's a lot more than simply painting glossy highlights. But it's a really great place to start. To practice this, try making your own sphere studies. So grab a variety of photo references of all sorts of different materials, from very flat to very shiny, make them black and white, and then on each sphere, simply try and reproduce the glossiness seen in each photo. So you don't have to worry about any of the rest of the texture, just the glossy highlight. So this sort of study is a fantastic way to analyze texture and to train your eye to see critically. 